Uh, happy Ramadan to all Muslims and Happy New Year. Uh, warm greetings to all those who are here today to participate in this number of meetings on the internet about Sudan and how to reimagine the security sector in the Sudan. I am uh, Professor Luca Bianqual, the academic dean in the Africa Strate Strategic Studies and the supervisor of the academic program for the national security strategy in Africa. And these number of meetings specifically on the Sudan. I will be the, fa the facilitator for this uh, meeting. And these meetings on Sudan about the security sector and its transition towards democracy has been organized by the Africa Center for Strate Strategic Studies and the United States Institute of Peace. We welcome you once again, especially those who have been attending throughout the uh, meetings till now. This will be the last meeting in the uh, one of five meetings on the Sudan. And this will be concentrating on the importance of the national security in the democratic transition in the Sudan. Today, it's a Sudani dialogue. The goals of this meeting the importance of the uh, uh, strategy for the transition uh, to democracy in the Sudan, and it's important. The first goal is to uh, discuss the justifications and the reasons for this uh, uh, strategic transition and this democratic transition. The second goal is to study the challenges that we could face in the national strategic reality that we have in the Sudan today. Third goal is to how we can uh, develop something like this to around something for future possibilities or uh, conditions that could arise during this transition. Before speaking with our speakers today, before I present the speakers, allow me to pre present to you the points uh, that were mentioned up till now in the previous meetings and the lessons lessons learned in the American experience regarding strategic development. The first point, is there, uh, an, is there a need for strategic uh, development in Africa? Providing security as a public service like education needs a broad policy and a strategy to implement this. So the real question here is, is not the importance of the national security for the African nations, but how to uh, develop the strategy. The second point, and this is in relation for, to some concepts, what is the difference between the uh, policy of national security and the strategy of national security? The policy is the, is the um, macro uh, scale of trying to achieve national security and to achieve certain goals according to national principles and beliefs and to draw the line in trying to create or provide security for a nation. The strategy is the plan, a, a technical plan on how to implement this. Second question is, how can you uh, develop a national security plan? According to some uh, uh, historic examples of some nations, according to the center, we have actually um, brought a number of examples in trying to develop uh, uh, actual, and we specified seven stages in developing it. The first one, which is the initiation, and planning. Second stage is before the developing, specifically the uh, the points of review and discussion. The third is the development or the form. And fourth is the uh, is consultation and the review. 
and the fifth is to re rely on and to uh, write down and the fifth the sixth is to um, uh, 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 to announce and to spread uh, through the media and the seventh is to implementation this list actually breaks down the components the necessity of all of these that uh, is known and has been studied in a lot of Arabic nations when it comes to reimagining, as an example, what we have in the Sudan. Last point is the importance of leadership in all this. The national strategy uh, needs leadership to be led. And in addition to technical leadership who have solutions, the point here is to draw a plan in a way that was uh, created and developed throughout the process of creating it. Let us start with our dialogue. I'm happy to uh, introduce speakers today who have broad understanding and uh, expanded experience. And this is the retired general, Mubarak, Mubarak Babakar, and Ms. Umayma Qubbi, and Dr. Tamer Abdul Karim. Each one of their uh, bios uh, they have, but I'll just concentrate on some of what they have. Let's start with the uh, retired general Babakar. He works currently as a uh, advisor to the Minister of Defense. He worked as a general uh, director as the public relations in the Ministry of Defense. Also, he had many distinguished positions representing the Sudan government between 2006 and seven. He uh, worked in worked in the uh, uh, he got his bachelor's and master's in the diploma in the general management in Carnfield University in the UK. Welcome, General Mubarak. The second speaker, thank you, doctor, is Ms. Umayma Qutbi. She's an independent expert in the security sector. She headed Oxfam on the level of Af the African continent with high uh, with a high level. She uh, uh, actually uh, led a few programs regarding governance all over the continent. And she has a degree in the University of Khartoum and that she has a master's degree uh, from Jama from Juba University in Sudan. Welcome, uh, Ms. Omeima. The last speaker, is uh, Dr. Tamar Abdul Karim, and I presented him in a moment ago to the listeners. Dr. Tamar is a deputy director at the Peace Research Institute, University of Khartoum. He's also a lecturer in the Department of Sociology and Social Anthropology in the University of Khartoum. And he's a program coordinator for the project of assisting regional universities. He also serves as academic secretary of Nubian Studies Center. He received his PhD in anthropology from the University of, Kartu of uh, Bayreuth in Germany. And also in the, uh, he has his PhD, is uh, uh, also a degree in, from uh, Norway in the development of uh, Bergen, anthropology of development from Bergen. Welcome, Dr. Tamer. As you can see, one is from the security sector, one is from civil society, and one is, is from academia. And this is a good mix, I think, uh, when it comes to the diverse opinions, which could uh, reflect the diversity and the richness representing any dialogue pertaining to the Sudan. And uh, hopefully, God willing, it will be uh, hopefully, we will hopefully get to somewhere when it comes to reimagining the security sector in the Sudan. 
If we start with uh, Dr. General Mubarak. First question, and I hope it'll be within a framework of six to seven minutes. And uh, we thank you in advance for having in the past sent us some of your answers in a written form, according to your experience as a security expert and the reality of the Sudan. Do you think the national security is going to be important in the security reality that we face today in the Sudan and why? Thank you very much, Dr. Luca. Uh, greetings to everyone from the bottom of my heart, to uh, Ms. Umeyma and Dr. Tamer. And uh, to jump in directly, anyone who follows the Sudan see right, sees right now that the country is in a historic moment and we are going to th things in a simultaneous way, which is the transition that we're going through and things are happening very fast in events. So today we are living in the first portion and we have the uh, a very difficult way in going back into the fold of the international nations. And uh, the reform that we're hoping for is gonna be very difficult and things are daily as you know. And uh, this is pertaining to the Sudanese in a direct uh, form of what they are. And the uh, other thing is the regional position that we are in right now with neighboring countries. Right now, and looking at the fluid changes going on in the Sudan, we have to be giving care, give care to great care to what is being developed today. And of course the institutions have to be working in a certain way for the greater good. That is why we have to find and study the weaknesses and try to overcome points of threat wherever they may be. And to try to protect the security interests of the Sudan, we have to have mid-range plans to long-term plans, which serves the national security. In addition to giving time and understanding to resources needed. From Juba in uh, October 2020, which hands the uh, military conflicts in the Sudan, is a very core point and transitional historic point. And we have to bring in very important uh, partners because this agreement is very important for the entire transition. And trying to bring into the fold of the military, a lot of the armed militia groups would be a very important stage in the new reform uh, approach in the security uh, stage that we have. And this also determines uh, a lot of the details according to the constitution that we're working on to when we say work by that I mean reform the uh, presidential and the high ministry cabinet uh, has decided to do this and bring this to fruition which is to try to uh, develop the whole strategy for the greater good of the security, which protects citizens under this general uh, approach. Also, the strategy also determines the military uh, apparatus, all groups that have arms, where they are and to understand where they are and what to do with them. And we have to, you have to also understand and distinguish all of the different groups who they are that are armed on the stage right now. And and we're hoping that this strategy also includes a new mindset to be developed, which is for the nation, a new mindset and a new spirit on view. And to again, avoid the traps of developing a security system and apparatus that only protects the people in power and not the nation. And also to, for it to be formed in a way for it to be a quick response and a flexible response military uh, system, uh, be it at a uh, local, or regional, or international. 
when you look at the general goal, first of all, is to um, detach ourselves from the old issues and to do the strategy changes on all three levels, which is looking at all the challenges and what they are in a very active way. Third, the uh, distinguishing and studying of the actual uh, fabric of what we have on the field to know where the threats might come from. In the last nine years, we understand what we see is that we, as of course, as a nation that has become two nations, and it's com it just represents what Sudan and its people are and who they are. And uh, without going into detail, in it itself, that is a challenge to the nation. And according to the peace treaty, uh, the details of what we have there is to develop the greater goal of uh, security. Six, to understand the general um, security uh, uh, points that were mentioned in former meetings. Seventh, the opportunities and the uh, and the speed to take advantage of certain opportunities. And last of all, to be have clarity of vision that the point is for uh, stability and development as much as we can, which relies on uh, national goals and core values. And the thing here is that there are uh, strategies that have been uh, uh, formed in the past, which is short-term goals, medium goals, and long-term goals. I mean, the goal is by 2022, 2020, uh, 30, and 2040. The annual threat assessment will be a part of uh, the things that we will be conducting, for example, in 2021. And when it comes to the strategy formation, which is something that is written down in uh, previous meetings, which is the Future State 2030, which was uh, issued in 2014, which talks about what could happen up until 2013. And at last, which is the Trends 2040, which was issued in uh, March 2021. This sources all refer to the demography of the nation and how it can affect all of these goals. And there are three levels of this. The questions that comes to mind is, uh, yes, but the point here is um, how do we answer these questions and how much in depth we look at things. And we have to look at the geography of the nation, of its all, uh, the, the different uh, components and to understand it. And we look at the cities, main cities, medium cities, and who we're neighboring. All these in itself, it was if at a glance to know how complex this whole situation is. If we were to switch into the uh, continental view of the whole scope, in last meetings, when it came to uh, uh, strategy and how things are, one uh, wonders how we can do plans in a certain way from term to term of timeline course, within the scope of the African Union. And uh, talking about uh, transitional justice, for example, and uh, taking into consideration the unofficial sectors, support in a way that would reflect the political nature for of reforming. And I mean here the political will, there should be a, a leadership also. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for this presentation and uh, uh, the touched on the importance of this uh, strate national strategic uh, uh, points for Sudan and people need to 
consider all of these uh, important points, especially at the very beginning why are we putting this national strategy. Thank you very much. Now we go to the next point. If, uh, if Sudan started uh, developing this national strategy, what are the uh, practical steps uh, that are necessary uh, need to be taken to uh, guarantee a comprehensive uh, results for the uh, stakeholders. Uh, we're talking here about the security, military, uh, intelligence, and uh, police in brief. Uh, thank you. Talking about the requirements, and we have to have uh, a definition of the security uh, agreed by all parties. Second, there had to be a consensus on the uh, basic values, respecting others and uh, exchanging the ideas and uh, transparency. And there had to be a consultation with all people uh, of, uh, in, uh, that they have, the, the stakeholders, and learn about their desire and uh, their inputs on the reforms of the security sector. There should be a, a strategic dialogue, uh, get the stakeholders to do together. What, I, what that means, in a way, is to have a strategic analysis. And I tell you that we already uh, started on that aspect. There are the specialists, professional, uh, working on the uh, this and they already had some experience before but because, since the circumstances had changed so they have to update and start working on uh, the same issues all over now talking about the security apparatuses uh, and uh, uh, correct me if i'm wrong to re reform the security sector should never mean weakening the sector because that would create uh, a lot of problems uh, internally and uh, uh, internationally and we all know the consequences of that another point there should be dialogues between the civilian and the military uh, sectors the military need to understand the requirement of the civilian and the civilian side should also understand the requirements and the motives of the uh, military and the security sections uh, in the sector and if we have time i could uh, add more uh, later thank you very much uh, General Mubarak, you emphasized on very important point ref that uh, reforming the security sector shouldn't mean uh, weakening it, but the, maybe the opposite. One of the readings we've been uh, doing and uh, the recommendation we've been taken into consideration, uh, which was uh, uh, emphasizing on the benefits of reforming the sector so the reforms or the the national strategy uh, of the security sector is really important for all these component of that uh, strategy the last question for you uh, mr mubarak uh, talking here from the point of view of the security uh, uh, sectors what if you tell us a little bit about the uh, possible challenges we may face in the future if Sudan started uh, shaping this national strategy and how can we overcome these challenges thank you doctor to answer the question I would say uh, going through the current status we are, uh, see now in Sudan we need to give the opportunity for the stakeholders to discuss the, the requirements of the uh, uh, security reforms in the country. 
but we have to have uh, uh, enough details that would deal with uh, the governance and built on uh, the principle uh, that was agreed upon in uh, the negotiation for peace and and they should be uh, uh, a, a trust building between the the state and the people and and uh, as we know there are a lot of uh, laws here and we need to update all of these regulations and get it ready to be applied in the shadow of a democratic system and uh, the supervision of those elected uh, uh, people which required a lot of efforts and of course we have a lot of challenges on the other hand we all can defeat or overcome if we have the sincere desire even the Nin was uh, put forward a paper before and mentioned that the, uh, the, uh, the basics uh, to transition are the following is to have a certain level of economical uh, uh, development education Third is uh, a, a big mid middle class, and uh, fourth is dealing uh, with these uh, uh, sectarian problems and try to uh, stick to the uh, principles of democracy and guarantee the civil rights. If you notice, in the last 30 years in Sudan, there was a collapse on the uh, middle class and uh, the gap was uh, really big uh, uh, between uh, those on the top of the pyramid and those in the bottom of the pyramid. And uh, we had a lot of problems also with the force, uh, with, uh, with the labor uh, force. Uh, uh, we likewise, uh, in the military, uh, there was like a kind of gaps and uh, incoherent between the leadership and the base. So we we have to have this strategy at the top being applied on all levels and connected with all levels, uh, talking about the top, the middle, and the bottom, and uh, the middle class is the connecting uh, uh, bridge and we have to work on enhancing their work and uh, make them more effective. So the question here, where are we in, uh, where do we stand in, the, uh, uh, in applying the, this strategy? And of course, uh, the economy is very important. If we have a bad economy, it will affect everything. So we have to have a good economy and uh, uh, work uh, our way uh, up. And I say, and uh, the, we, uh, we received uh, uh, a, a, a document about uh, uh, the defining the uh, human security and, it, and uh, it was mentioned in that American paper that the uh, uh, economy, uh, economical uh, security is the national security. And we need to have the enough funding because without enough funding, uh, we will uh, suffer. And our expectations and goals has to be realistic. So we cannot talk about putting a national strategy within uh, two years. It's not an easy thing. Uh, we have to have all of these uh, stakeholders in this uh, national uh, dialogue and uh, consensus on the national level. That takes some time. This is one of the challenges, of course. If we would uh, f follow on some uh, other uh, experiments, uh, uh, experiences also in other countries, uh, especially the, uh, uh, Spain uh, after Franco in 1975, 
they had this uh, transition successfully, uh, and they had the constitution in 1979. In uh, February 1981, uh, the, uh, we know the, the movement of the uh, National Guard who uh, uh, took over the parliament and uh, uh, we know what happened after that. So challenges you can expect them to last even uh, you, you, if you have this uh, transition. But you have to be cautious and uh, put like uh, plans on how what to do why we have these setbacks. Do you think we have time to talk about more challenges, Doctor? Uh, it is, with the time is limited, if you could you go very brief. W one of the uh, main points that uh, never been touched on the, the last uh, uh, meetings Uh, the old guard uh, uh, represent one of the challenges, really. And uh, th we need to learn and do better in uh, how to manage this transition and create confidence and uh, uh, hearts and minds of people uh, in the, uh, the future and uh, the process of transition. And I could say, and frankly speaking, we, we can uh, 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 add uh, that uh, group of people that came to power after that uh, transition. And I would like to emphasize again uh, that uh, on that point that the stakeholder has to play a role in all of these uh, process. Uh, and we should work uh, with the people in, in the streets and everywhere. We. Uh, there are some group who distance themselves from being part of this transition because they don't want to be working under the uh, this uh, transparent and uh, uh, democratic system. And uh, thank you. This is what they had in brief. Thank you for analyzing analyzing these obstacles in a realistic way. You always uh, uh, emphasize on the uh, uh, economy, uh, security, security of the economy. We all know in Africa, uh, we uh, suffer from uh, a lot of these problems. And we have a lot of wealth in Africa, which is uh, most of the time mismanaged. We need to have this vision so we could benefit the most from uh, these wealth. Thank you for uh, uh, what you mentioned, especially about the uh, silent majority which try to not to take part uh, in all of these uh, processes. Thank you. Uh, Umayma, you have an experience, enough experience in uh, security and governance. And as I asked uh, uh, General Mubarak, so the question is, how can we uh, fulfill uh, those uh, security arrangement in, uh, in a, a, a frame of uh, a general strategy that reflects the Sudanese? In another way, uh, what do you think about connecting by, between the security sector and the national sec uh, security strategy? Thank you, uh, Dr. Duca, and thank you for uh, those on the platform, and thank you for the African Center for uh, organizing all of these uh, 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 meetings, it was uh, which we believe all were successful, and especially uh, the talking about the security uh, sector. Thank you for the question. Uh, uh, the Jubra uh, agreement, and I know where do we put it between the security reforms, the sectors reforms, and the national strategy? So without going into details, 
uh, with the, the like compare between uh, uh, reforming the security sector and developing the security sector without minimizing or shrinking or weakening the sector. So the, the peace uh, treatment in Juba is to reform the security sector, not to transitioning it or transforming it. Yeah, yeah. So reforming the security sector in, in brief is redirecting the uh, security uh, uh, organization to be uh, more complying with the needs of the people. And it should be done within uh, the uh, uh, rule of law. And this is very important uh, as a strategy, we put it for the national security and uh, for the governance uh, uh, issue. And uh, the t democratic transitioning, uh, because these are uh, the basics of the reform process. The goal is to create uh, security uh, apparatus that are quite capable of taking uh, responsibility in the shadow of the political and security situation. At the same time, to have uh, 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 this kind of flexibility to deal with different entities, the parliament on one side, the people on the other side, and the uh, po politician. So we have to uh, uh, really underline all of these, uh, the voice. Um, it never happened in, in Sudan that uh, uh, the civil society ever played an important role in uh, uh, governance or in, um, uh, in uh, monitoring the security apparatuses before. Uh, and this is really important point we need uh, uh, to uh, follow. And on yeah. the other side, the security side action transition is very deep. It should be organized and, and uh, with, pol with policies behind it and institutionally done, and also to rely on the points of power or strength in the way in doing it. I think this is something that we should really do uh, because the, uh, p the, p the power uh, relations that you have in the Sudan, and be it regional or within the country itself, is to understand it and to do it according to what's the reality and what we have and to know among all of these powers who is with this transition and who is in support of so that the institutional system that we're trying to establish can take benefit of it. And uh, like uh, the general mentioned before me, there is a silent majority uh, uh, who are not voicing themselves who are quite a few, and uh, this is something that's going to affect all of our daily lives. This, and another thing that I think that was not mentioned in the Juba Treaty, is the transition about the in the organized manner, uh, and also the culture, the mindset and the culture of these institutions, the security institutions. Um, that's something that was not mentioned, and to understand what the culture is. And it's a very broad thing as a concept, if you were to look at it, because uh, so the point here is uh, understanding it, open it for a dialogue and see where the dialogue will lead us in trying to understand this culture in these institutions. Is it an old uh, mentality? Does it go before the colonial period, after the colonial period? Is there any economic uh, links to this culture in these institutions? Like, uh, and if we could also, people like uh, Dr. Tamer and through his expertise and, and style to open dialogue channels uh, in this field and also in economic areas too. So uh, when it comes to uh, the human resources, 
uh, the personnel I'm talking about here and these institutions, be it leadership or anyone under them, and to understand how they have been trained, uh, how much they know about human rights, how much of it is uh, of this is a part of uh, uh, their culture, or when it comes to Article 25, when it comes to protecting women and young uh, uh, women uh, as a crucial article in society. And uh, the former president is known to have said in the past that uh, he would say that the ratio of soldiers and security individuals to population was not efficient. It was insufficient. And uh, uh, that in itself was a, uh, a hindrance in the, in, the in the change for the military mentality. When it comes to civil society and their role, I believe the institutions and their relationships with uh, civil society organizations is a, a tense relationship. And that's in the least way uh, a person can, I mean, that's on the, on, on the simplest side of describing it. And this has to be uh, also fixed and changed. And of course, there is a long history of violations that have existed in the past. That's why a, uh, a transition has to be made. And, uh, and also, like the general said, what do we mean by reform for these institutions? Uh, the traditional uh, institutions, intelligence, police, military? Because we know there is a new reality that's imposing itself in the Sudan right now. And especially when it comes to the, uh, the Jupa uh, agreement, you have to understand a lot of people sitting around the table there are people who were carrying arms in the past and who are hoping to be integrated uh, going forward. And uh, uh, one has to also change the definition when we say the Sudanese military, it doesn't mean the former military only, they have to be flexible that they will have to be there to um, uh, uh, embrace other factions to bring them into an organized form. And also we have uh, large entities like the Ministry of Defense as an example. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, and the Ministry of Justice. Uh, we have, when we have the Ministry and we have the District Attorney and we have all the judges, these, all of them. will play a crucial role, and especially when it comes to the supervision of the transition. On the other side, we have the security, which I just mentioned. Then we have the strategies of the national strategy. One thing to mention, or I think magical phrases that has a place, is that the the national security strategy is a social agreement between government and the people. And it determines the role in proper definition of the security apparatus and the institutions, and that the citizen is what and who should be protected. So this contract doesn't really exist because there is no strategy to begin with. And there is no dialogue between uh, the uh, security institutions and that is why there is no social uh, agreement uh, around it forming or existing Ms. Umeima, if uh, 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 we have important questions coming up if we could if we could if we could come around back if you can just Uh, if you could just concentrate on the question, which was the difference between uh, reform and the transition uh, and how one, uh, one or the other needs uh, the st strategy uh, between the two. You concentrated and you mentioned that the national strategy is the, and the, uh, the, the, the magical phrase here is the social 
contract, as we say, between the people and the security institutions or security apparatus. Thank you for all the points, but there will be a Q&A coming up. But let's go to the next question, if we may. If the Sudan, regarding to the national strategy development, what are some practical steps that can guarantee that the operation will be broad and bring in everyone who is uh, of uh, who's a partner especially a lot of the areas that have been actually really hurt by events in the last uh, uh, period we have a saying in sudan we say uh, we say that the spark of fire uh, burns anything that it touches the definition that we have it should be a broad definition when we say security and we're not talking about just the established institutions when we talk about a definition uh, that i mean people everyone when they say a national uh, security framework to know what it means pertaining to sudan and uh, and of course that's why i think that the definition should come from the ground up for what it means and also my apologies there's a slight uh, interruption in the uh, reception and also the clarity of vision and uh, the suggestions and uh, the goals and the hopes is one thing but it has to be done within an example and a mindset that is enriched with a lot of narratives that come from the people the, the the regions and the places in the country that have seen a lot throughout these years to give voices to women young women uh, uh, to be successful, I think there should be a broad definition to anything that we talk about and for it to come from the ground up. Another point, it could be academic, I think, which is to study, a deep study of the reality, the security reality that exists today in the Sudan. And like what the general mentioned earlier, to see the trends going on, what the reality is, to map out what we have and to from it for it as a result as a study to open our eyes to what the fact and reality is i mean we can't put everything in one page it's very broad it's very great that's why i think uh, the people who are working on the strategy to uh, split up between their roles uh, for example break down the country by region to study it in depth and then it's integrated into a broader uh, view on how to look at things especially when you go back to the juba agreement of course when we talk about the uh, geographic we can be geographic we can be um, ethnic uh, uh, to study and un to fully understand the crisis that we have in sudan i suggest that this divide of for study purposes is Uh, things that are uh, pertaining to um, human necessities, climate, and uh, to understand what we have. For example, from five years from now, to know and to do a study to see what are the possibilities of things that might happen in the future. So, uh, I mean, a strategy in the window of what we have for two years is something, but I think uh, we can start the project, but we should uh, have a timeline or in a goal and for it to be divided into, for example, what we need now and what we should be doing now. That's one thing. And uh, for the security of uh, different situations that we have in the country that are not similar to other parts of the country. I suggest also that uh, 
to, for example, what we're doing right now to be a two year window to for it to be um, Uh, for that to be a, a dense short-term strategy to be looked at. And like the general mentioned also, we can also have a 10-year, and then also why not even a 50-year uh, longer range view of, uh, for example, what we are seeing things and how we would like things to be. So that we can have a proper understanding and for it to be clear, so that we can decrease the amount of military actions from one group towards another. And there should be also a certain expectation of flexibility by everyone. And to know that whatever you're doing, however we're doing it, that there is a side of learning for everyone that's happening. And uh, how we can uh, deal with any situation and uh, a strategy, uh, I mean, for example, we can theorize on the certain things, uh, anything that we can think of, you should expect that that thing will not be the same as it is uh, when we really delve into it or uh, with time, that fact and that reality might change. That's why we, we should try to see if we can gauge or measure the um the correctness of anything that we do that's why we should have very uh, clear criteria to um, gauge success and to measure it and also failure to study it to gauge it to, to, to measure it and this uh I'm, and, and so that the strategy would be something that is not just a document sitting on the shelf but it's something that people go to as a living and an active and rich document. When it comes to uh, points of power, which I could repeat many, many times, is uh, also uh, very important, the participation. People who don't have a voice to be part of the voice. People in rural areas, people who are in camps, and, uh, and uh, the silent majority, which to be honest, there are people who are really impoverished. Uh, and there are people who are even more impoverished, impoverished than others, marginalized even more than others. Uh, and when I say marginalization, I could be political, security, and economic. I think my time is up. No, you have a lot. Yeah, you have plenty. Thank you so much, Ms. Umayma. I mean, the point of the flexibility was very interesting uh, for the strategy to have a flexibility within it. And it's very important that there would be criteria to measure success and failure, of course. And some core issues. I mean, the uh, specific uniqueness that you have in the Sudan is a thing that, which is, I mean, something that we all admire, but when it comes to a national view, uh, it's very important with all of its complexities. One last question, and although you might have answered and touched upon it, which be the the challenges, and you did mention it a few times. I mean, uh, if we could just go into it, delve into it a little bit more in detail. How can one overcome the challenge, especially when it comes to the developing of the national strategy, especially through, the, uh, through your prism as civil society? Like I mentioned that things that were committed by the military apparatus against the citizenry in the past. I mean, uh, and the relationship between the military individuals themselves as a single institution. For like, uh, for example, when we measure uh, the temperature of anything like water, how can we gauge and, uh, and measure the nature of them themselves? And then as an entity, them with the broader national security um, goals. And when it comes to comrades in arms and the partners of the Juba, uh, 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 
how all of them can come to some sort of understanding, a common language between them. I mean, they have the military and they have, uh, they may have uh, uh, the power to push things with force, but there should be at least a dialogue between military and military individuals. Another thing, another problem that we have is that the, uh, the secrecy culture that we have and lack of transparency, uh, that's also very widespread. And uh, I mean, and there are the uh, remnant of the uh, security forces that belong to the uh, uh, former regime they went like hidden uh, we need to for the citizen to learn the places of danger and we should be transparent and then uh, we need to have uh, uh, the concept of the reforms of the uh, uh, security sector and the DDR, uh, uh, which is uh, which stand for disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration. There's always. Uh, a, a mix up between all of these concepts. We have to be very careful and we have to uh, work according to uh, uh, Juba's uh, peace treaty, uh, although there is not uh, enough explanation about uh, these uh, points because we know all of these items need to be explained better and uh, elaborated on more. Also, people always talking that they should we should have one unified uh, army with the new doctrine uh, to now people talking about this point that we uh, still not used to this new concept the which is quite different from the old concept. So we need to dismantle the old ideologies and reform it into a new concept. Also, the uh, gosh, I'm losing the uh, connection here. There is the ec economical interest, uh, uh, which is very important we need to work on it and provide for it and help the people to learn uh, more about uh, these uh, uh, these uh, uh, the sides of the state uh, we need to uh, deal with the current uh, military uh, uh, they we need to make them learn how to deal with the civilian uh, side how could we train them to have this kind of dialogue and get us get them involved in this security sector reforms and other problems we suffering from and and uh because we know a lot of people believe uh, that they have to monopolize the uh, uh, sources of uh, power. Uh, we need to implant new ideologies into their minds and train them for the new uh, situation. Thank you for talking about and touching on all of these important points and that we need to have a kind of uh, comprehensive study for the security uh, situation uh, uh, we need to uh, understand all of the requirements and uh, also you touched on a very important point that we need to abandon this uh, uh, f f regime uh, former regimes uh, philosophy and build a new culture 
also he touched on the economical reforms, which is very important. Thank you for all of these uh, uh, analysis. Now we would like to talk to doctor, with Dr. Tamer. Dr. Tamer, you just listened to uh, General Mubarak and uh, Umayma. And of course, you understand the Sudanese uh, situation very well. Would you please uh, shed some light on how to uh, use the, uh, uh, the national security strategy development and uh, the dialogue taking place and restructuring the uh, uh, vital sectors of uh, the country and the new identity and this relationship between the civilian side and the military side. Uh, and, uh, as also Ms. Umayma mentioned, that relationship between the military people themselves and the civilians and one with the others, uh, and how important all of these relationship in the uh, national dialogue uh, taking place now. Dr. Tamer, uh, welcome. Th thank you, General Mubarak. Shukran uh, Umayma, and thank you for. Uh, uh, if I know if you could hear me very well. Yes, we can hear you. The, it's a very important question. Because it sheds a light on what's the important. Uh, th uh, and the importance of uh, re relating all of these factors we are going through together and evaluate it uh, in a new way. As Ali Batani said, that we are going through several transitional phases, not just one. So having this uh, national s uh, security strategy uh, and uh, this, uh, the security strategy is a very important, uh, as we know in the sociology and uh, the political science, it is important for any political entity is to provide the most important uh, uh, factor, which is security. and how to uh, achieve uh, security on the ground. We, uh, we need to have all different kinds of security achieved, the economical security, the, uh, the civilian security, uh, you name it. As we remember what happened before in the former regimes, we suffered on all of these aspects. So when these services are, uh, was, they were supposed to provide for the security of the people, but instead they were providing for the terrorizing, they were terrorizing the people. And uh, uh, th that's the new uh, thing we need to uh, work to create this transition, and this is very really important for the national security strategy. How can we transform these uh, security services to become uh, a, 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 a service that would serve the people, especially taking into consideration that people used to suffer from the former uh, philosophy, which was based on terrorizing the people. How we can create and achieve this trans, uh, transition in the minds of the people. And this required to define uh, security, redefine security, which could mean several things from, if you look at it from different angles, it's multi-dimensional kind of definition, which uh, define the security itself on one hand and those player who are working and creating or providing for the security. So this is very uh, uh, important discussion we need to touch on. I know we're going to talk about it because uh, 
we could uh, uh, make a transition, transformance. We have re we need to re-establishment. I know we have the security service uh, already uh, established, but. We're not going to start from zero, but we need to uh, transform them and uh, improve them. And this paradigm shift we talked about, we're talking about uh, tr transition and transformers, but not on reforms. We need to create this uh, feelings in the minds of the Sudanese uh, and this new image of the security service and to uh, create this legitimacy and uh, this reformance would enhance uh, 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 the this, uh, image in the mind uh, minds of the people because they would especially if we have like uh, dialogues taking place between all parties will uh, help to facilitate people to uh, uh, receive, re be better receive, uh, receive in a better way this new image of uh, and the philosophy of the security in a more sustainable way. But uh, I would like to emphasize that we have to do this together because the people use that, people used to imply on them stuff. Now I'm talking that the, we need to have this dialogue and work out together to shape all of these concepts so that we can guarantee this confident. It is important for the citizens, the citizen citizen, to feel like they are citizen of this country. They belong to this country. And one of the factors that would enhance that feeling, having this uh, realistic uh, security and this transition in the security uh, uh, sector and the philosophy is the first practical point which to start with, I would say, to confess that the way or the methodology we uh, the uh, security services used to be run uh, by and the structure had a lot of problems we need that needed to be repaired and uh, reformed so we need to admit and confess that this was a problem and then we had mistakes and i think this is our first challenge we have a lot of indications and the, of the problems that we suffered in, in, in Sudan because of all of these problems we had in the, in the past. It's uh, quite clear this, uh, uh, we need a serious transformation uh, to take place because it's quite obvious, the need is quite obvious. So in order for us to be transformed, and we need to have that vision, where are we heading to? And having this national security strategy is like a plan that would lead us there, uh, using several mechanisms, like having uh, several security services working together, uh, to, to the academics, uh, everybody, uh, the uh, civil uh, society organizations, the women, the political party, we all have to work together. Uh, and the parliament now, I know they are, uh, I know why the political forces are reluctant in forming the parliament because the parliament should be already formed from uh, these uh, political entities. We have to have like a parliamentarian uh, committee that would bring people of a specialty with their visions and uh, apply and try to work on the uh, uh, reforms. And would have like uh, several mechanisms on working in consultation with the uh, several entities, civilians uh, on the civilian level or other levels. 
this way we would have more legitimacy and acceptance by the people from the people another point is to have this uh, Sudanese uh, context we are working on uh, which is uh, like we have to uh, there's a context and the philosophy of working uh, what comes after the work or the disturbances and uh, we should work together to we pass that stage that uh, chaos and the, and wars and all of that we need to work together I get all the parties to uh, frame this national security strategy and of course uh, we need the uh, support uh, technical support or any kind of support, uh, f f uh, international support. And I emphasize what my colleagues mentioned, that uh, we need to have this strategy to be uh, uh, Sudanese uh, kind of strategy. B but we see uh, those uh, forces that try to manipulate the, this process. Uh, but that's why we have to be very careful. And also this, uh, the secretive kind of culture. I know we understand that there are some points of the strategy has to be secretive, like, you know, not uh, uh, publicized or discussed and published, but the strategy overall has to be clear and uh, uh, it public uh, had a give the public an idea that, so they know what's going on because the strategy it touches their life uh, uh, except for special or very limited points talking about the uh, the uh, the the arms and uh, the uh, mobilizing the, uh, the the military and all of these other important and uh, secretive kind of uh, uh, factors. We have to be uh, uh, in inclusive. We have to talk about a lot of things, almost everything to the people, let them understand where we are heading so they can get along with us on the same uh, line. We, we, as we see in the area and the Arab world, the, the security service uh, does, don't have a lot of popularity and uh, there is that uh, Western uh, views of the American, uh, of the African uh, dictatorships and how they run their security services. Uh, uh, so we need to change that image and work to become uh, more realistic and tra transparent. I, 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 I read the literatures uh, and as uh, everybody know that uh, the people working with us, uh, f f uh, international organization, they tell us and they encourage us that we should work together to create a national, a kind of uh, Sudanese uh, strategy. We can use uh, expertise, we can uh, have professionals to help us to build our uh, strategy. Uh, uh, it is c very critical for us to have all of these factors working together. Thank you, uh, Tamer. Uh, talk, uh, the, about talking about the importance of the national security strategy, in, especially in the aspect of dialoguing between the different uh, 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 entities. As Dr. As General Mubarak, we have to have a real dialogue because security is a general uh, service, just like uh, education and health. 
and should be dealt with in the same way like we did with these uh, other se sectors because we are here talking about offering service for the, uh, that would help the welfare of the people by providing this uh, security. We have to have, as you mentioned, this consultation with different people, with the, uh, the, the stakeholders. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Thamir.